very good evening to all my audience. Um, today, I'm going to present about my paper, which is the Robotic Assisted Revision Total Knee Arthroplasty, a novel surgical technique. First, I would like to thank the Arthroplasty Society of Asia for awarding this uh, gold award to this paper. And I would like to thank all my co-authors for the success of this uh, paper. So a slight introduction about the hospital. Uh, Epworth Hospital um, is the largest arthroplasty centre in Australia. There are about 3,000 to 4,000 joints done a year at the Epworth Healthcare. And this centre has an active robotic assisted uh, joint replacement program. And I would like to declare um, there is no uh, conflict of interest. For introduction, revision total knee arthroplasty is a revision is a challenging procedure, uh, which um it has a high complication and failure rates, and um the difficulty includes um um a compromised soft tissue envelope, which which can also result in bone loss, and alteration of the joint line, and um usually is causing the elevation of the joint line. And a robotic physician surgery has been shown to enhance uh, the accuracy and to improve reproducibility in the primary total uh, arthroplasty cases. So for the methods, uh, materials and method use, this is a retrospective studies with patients recruited from the Edward Richmond Hospital uh, from 1st of April 2021 to the 30th of April to the following year. And all the surgeries have been done by two senior surgeons, uh, which is experienced in the revision total uh, knee arthroplasty surgeries, as well as MAKO robotic assisted surgeries. And the inclusion criteria uh, were patients previously having received a total knee a uni compartmental knee or either a second stage revision with a cement spacer in situ and a well controlled infection. And all these patients also receive uh, micro robotic assisted revisions, uh, total knee arthroplasties. And those patients uh, that are excluded are those with follow up less than six months duration. So the results, um, a total of 19 patients were recruited, uh, which fulfills the inclusion and uh, criteria. And these patients consist of 12 females and seven males. Their age range from 57 years old to uh, 48 years old. And all these patients were revised using a fully cemented total knee arthroplasty implants from uh, triathlon division knee system and assisted with the micro robotic arm. So all these patients will then follow up uh, at six weeks, three months, and six months um, after the surgery. And um, uh, AP and lateral radiographs were obtained on all of these follow-ups, as well as they were also assessed regarding their ambulatory status, as well as functional status. So this is the um, uh, summary of the steps of the surgical techniques that um, we use during the uh, paper. So the first step is that um, a good quality pre-operative CD scan is obtained. And this is done during the, this is done using a standard um, macroplasty protocol with a good metal artifact reduction sequence. As you can see in this slide, before the mass sequence and use, and after the mass sequence is used, the metal, um, the implant can clearly be seen as well as the bone can clearly be seen, be seen if you use a good mass sequence. The CT images were then segmented by the MAKO product specialist and then uploaded into the robotic arm. So the next step is a um, pre-operative planning. So the main aim of this is to ensure that the joint line is kept at the correct level. 
uh, in relation to the femoral media epicondyle as well as the fibula head. And this planning page is so also useful to determine the ideal placement of the new implant uh, by enabling us to see the position of the stem in the femoral as well as the tibia canal. However, there is usually the need for intraoperative adjustment after the removal of the implants. So the placement, next is the placement of the arrays. For this paper, um, uh, the femoral and tibia pins were placed through a separate step incisions to accommodate uh, the femoral stem that will be used during the uh, revision surgery. So after that, bony landmarks is then registered. It can be done without the removal of the existing um, implant, especially for the femoral. So the implant is uh, the bone is registered at the periphery of the femoral component. And um, after that, uh, removal of the insert is done. For the registration of the tibia bone landmark, it is done with the existing tibia plate in situ as well. And it is also done on top of the tibia tray as well as in the periphery of the tibia tray. Bear in mind that registration or verification of certain points may not be able to perform due to the presence of the implant, which might be affected by the uh, metal artifact or be obscured by the existing uh, implant in situ. Therefore, additional points of the bony surfaces can be uh, obtained. So after that, a trial insert is then inserted back into the metal components to help in the ligamentum balancing. So this is done before the removal of any metal implants. So the removal of femoral component is done using the standard method, um, either using a fine saw or osteotome. And removal of the tibia tray can be done using the Miko saw by distalizing the cuts just distal to the tibia tray and saw around the cube. Intraoperative. Then the next step is intraoperative adjustment of the implant planning and doing the bony cut. So after you remove the metal implants, the bone uh, loss is then assessed. So the sequence of the bone cut is the same as in the primary knee case, whereby a right angle saw is first used for the distal femoral cut, uh, then the posterior chamfer, and then changing into a sagittal saw for the remaining cuts. So if there is minimal bone loss, a refresher cut is then uh, performed. This is done by adjusting um, the implant planning page. And um, so that only a sliver of bone is removed uh, during the sawing. So if an implant is, uh, if an augment is needed for the bone loss, uh, first to the distal femur, then adjustment is done to the plan by proximalizing the cut in 5 mm increment because the augment is in 5 mm increment. And then you should remember to distalize back the initial cut before cutting the posterior chamfer if you do the proximalizing of the 5 mm increment for the augment. So bear in mind that the green probe is needed to recheck back the checkpoint uh, prior uh, with every alteration to the plan prior to starting the saw. So after doing the, the right angle saw, you can change to a sagittal saw to cut the anterior femur. So the first cut that is to be done is the anterior femur cut followed by the anterior chamfer. And this is done to prevent any notching. So if any augment is needed for the posterior condom, um, it is anterioralized uh, so that you get a 5 and an increment cut until a sliver of bone cut is achieved. So after you have performed the bone cuts and uh, the trial inserts, um, trial component will then inserted back in um, for the ligament balancing. So the ligament balancing was done using the ligament balancing page in the robotic system because this provides a real-time feedback of the gap as well as the range of movement of the knee. 
So the after that, appropriate releases can be done to balance up the knee. So finally, the implant is then implanted in before removing all the checkpoints and the array pins. So I'll talk a little bit about uh, revision uh, uh, from a uni to a total. Basically, the first few steps are the same until um, whereby a commonly a medial uh, tibial augment is used. Usually a five or millimeter augment is used and also a short tibial stem is needed. So a primary femoral component is can be used in most cases if there is careful removal of the initial femoral component because for a uni knee, usually the femoral component is thinner than a total knee. So to, in some cases, the femoral component is deliberately flexed or anteriorized 1 to 2 mm to better uh, compensate for the bone loss on the posterior condyle. For on the tibia side, a medial tibia augment is usually needed or if you can also use a thicker body to compensate for the bone loss. So there are a few methods that you can done can be done, mechanical aligned or a non-mechanical aligned knee. And for removal of the femoral components, for the femoral component, it is usually removed using standard methods, but for the tibia component, it can be removed using the Mako saw. So the Mako saw is used to cut the anterior and lateral part to the keel, and you may need to expand the haptic boundary for the medial side um, to achieve the cuts. And also you might need to downsize the tibia component to a size one to two, so that you can use the narrow saw blade in the Mako system to cut the tibia component out safely. Usually the knee is placed in hyperflexion, and in most cases, you might need a small a micro saw to cut the posterior medial corner of the tibia plateau to complete up the saw. And when during the cuts for the tibia, the lesser lateral cut is usually performed first prior to doing the deeper medial um, tibial cut. So for cases whereby you revise from a um, well-controlled uh, infection, with the uh, cement spacer in situ to a total knee, the pre-op planning page is important. So for this pre-op planning page, you can use it to identify where is the native joint line because of extensive bone loss and scarring that has already occurred. So epicondyles is easier identified through a CT scan and a femoral augment, and femoral augments are usually used to prevent elevation of joint line uh, to maintain the joint line at the native um, joint line. So this can also uh, this page is also important for us to determine where is the ideal position of the stem to prevent any stem impingement. And a tibia bone loss can be dealt with using a tibia augment uh, if there is an equal bone loss medial and laterally, or a thicker body insert can be used if the bone loss is equal. So for the result of this uh, paper of 19, total 19 cases, there were 12 um, uh, revision from a total knee to a total knee, whereby 11 is caused by aseptic loosening and one is caused by an balanced knee. And for um, four cases is from a uni knee to a total knee, whereby two is caused by poly wear and two is caused by aseptic loosening and three from a cement spacer to a total knee and all these trees are been uh, well controlled uh, pro very prosthetic joint infection. So the follow-up for patients is 18 months, minimally up to 18 months. We should give a mean 10 months duration. So the mean RM in the last review um, is 1.5 to 114 degrees flexion. All patients are able to emulate um, in the community and they recover without any infection or needing any subsequent re-divisions. So in conclusion, the robotic assisted total knee replacement is a promising technique to improve surgical outcome because it increases the accuracy of the implant placement. It can also give us a better soft tissue protection and resulted in a better balanced knee. And 
bear in mind that further development of the daddy of the uh dedicated software revision software might be needed before we can popularize this technique and thank you